Hey guys, this is Mac again, and welcome back to the channel. I got a quick vlog for you here today on a great tool if you're a shooter who wants to help improve your performance by analyzing video of yourself shooting. It's called the Shot Coach app. It's by Max Michelle. It's been out for a couple of years. It's available for Apple products such as your iPhone or your iPad. Today I'm going to go through a couple of stages of myself and analyze it with the Shot Coach app. And I think you're going to be very impressed with what you see. And if you search for Shot Coach app on your desktop computer, you'll be brought to the iTunes store. And here's the logo for the app. And it does cost $4.99, which I think is very affordable for such a great app. And you can either download that from your desktop or just search for it from your iPhone or iPad. And I'm just going to do a quick screen capture here of my phone as I do it. Because I do have a couple of shooting videos already loaded onto my phone. When you open up the app, uh, it'll give you the option to import a video, and you do that just by clicking on the logo there on the left to import it. And I scroll down and search for the video that I want. Now these are some stages that I shot at Atlanta 3-Gun earlier in the year, and I'm just going to import one of those as an example. Now when you first import your video and start your editing, you'll see there are seven different logos that you can click on. First thing I like to do is to actually trim the video. Uh, there's usually some dead time at the beginning or at the end of videos, and um, I like to get rid of that so that the video is as short as possible. Um, the size of the file that you'll be outputting will be as small as possible, and you really don't need all that extra stuff. You just want the actual shooting, so I'm going to trim that off. So when you open up the video, here's what your screen's going to look like. Now, here's a quick tip, and I wish I had known this. Um, if you see that question mark logo on the left hand side of the screen, if you tap on that, it's actually going to explain to you what all the buttons do, uh, no matter what part of the app you're in. So I sort of fumbled my way around in this app for about 10 minutes before I clicked on that button and it actually explained to me what all the different buttons do. At the very bottom, the gray bar that looks like a ruler, that's called your timeline. And that's going to allow you to scrub through the video just simply by swiping your finger left or right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for the time in the video that I want to cue in the beginning of the video. And the two gray buttons that are right in the center of the screen, the first one on the left is the cue in button and the one on the right is the cue out. So see my RO here has the timer up. I know I'm about to start shooting here so I'm just going to just find a spot here and just cue it in. Then I'm going to go to the very end of the video by tapping on the button on the right hand side of the screen that takes you to the end. It looks like a triangle and a line and I'll find you see that I'm showing her my cleared shotgun here so I'm gonna cue it out there and then save and override this video and it actually replaces the stock video with all the extra time and this is exactly just the time that I need then this is just all the footage that I need of me shooting and once I go back to the home screen there I'm gonna click on the button that says mark shots and this is where you'll spend the majority of your time in the app it opens up your video again, and as you can see, the first thing I like to do is adjust the speed of the video. On the right hand side, you'll see a 1x, and you can tap on that button to either speed it up or slow it down. I'm going to go through until I get to one half speed. I found that that's the best for editing, not only because it slows things down so that you have more space to work with, but also because you can still hear the audio of the shots, and that's really important. Also at the bottom, you can see the red peaks of the sound. Uh, this is where you're going to want to mark different shots and splits and things based on uh, where the shot uh, sounds. The, the red peak is when the actual shot happens in the video. And if you look closely in the video, you can usually see gas coming out of the end of the barrel. That also helps you to know when to put your shot marker down. So as I hit play, I'm going to scrub through and find the beginning of the stage. And as I go back, I find uh, this long plateaued looking area, which is the sound of the beeper on the timer. So I just mark the beginning, and when I tap on the mark button, you can see it pulls up uh, 12 different options here for things that you can call it. Things like shots, transitions, start of the stage, end of the stage, splits, movement, etc. And I'm going to use the green button, which signals the start of the stage. And this also sets the timer at the top to know to start at zero to time your stage. So now you see it inserted a green marker there for the start of the stage. Now I'm going to search through and find my first shot. 
and there was a little bit of movement at the beginning of this stage which is something else that I can time. I'll go back and insert that marker in just a second but I do, I do want to go to my first shot and find it here. Now once you see about the 3.7, 3.8 second mark you see a peak in the red sound there. That's me firing my first shot. So I insert a bullet hole marker there and I'm going to go back and also insert a marker for the movement because I want to see how long it took me to move from the table to the first shot which was about two and a half seconds. The other cool thing is there's a running marker at the top right hand corner that tells you what your times are. Uh, the total stage time is in the upper left hand corner and then the other markers at the top of the app show you what you're marking so this is a shot and also uh, how much time has elapsed. So you see now I'm inserting a split. I went and marked my two shots and then went backwards and measured the split between the two shots. Now I'll just keep searching forward for more shots. Uh, here's another one here about 4.85 seconds. I'll insert a marker there for a shot. And then also I'll go back and measure the split in between the last shot and this shot. This is really, really helpful um, as someone who has always found it difficult to know what my splits were unless I was practicing with a timer. Uh, this is extremely helpful because you can do it after the fact as long as you have video of you shooting. So this process is going to go on now throughout the whole stage. It'll usually take you about 10 or 15 minutes to go through it and go through a video. And this is the most time consuming part is finding all the shots, uh, putting in the shots and the splits and then going back and forth and putting the markers down for everything. Now I'm moving in this stage now completely across the bay and I want to find out exactly how long it took me to move. Now from the video, I look like I probably could have pushed myself a little bit harder moving across the stage, but I was going fast enough that I actually almost slipped down so being able to measure that in time kind of gives me an indication of what's the best movement speed for me as long as I'm safe and also as quick as possible. Now I'll measure my next shot and then go and measure the splits between these shots with my handgun. And I'll finish out this array of steel and targets here with my handgun marking each uh, shot and each split and then the transition to the shotgun on this stage. And another note is that if you ever mess up when you're doing any of this, uh, there's a red trash can button in the upper left hand corner that you can hit which will erase the marker or the button that you just placed. And another tip is that to, to play the file, you just tap on the timeline at the bottom. Um, I like to go back and forth and just hit play and make sure that I'm putting in all my shots and I'm measuring everything correctly. Now I fast forwarded a little bit because it was becoming a bit, a bit time consuming. Uh, this is after I've transitioned to my shotgun on this stage. And there were a couple of things that I was interested in measuring here first was the transition from my handgun to my shotgun which I measured and then also was the splits between my shots here with the shotgun. Um, all of these shots with the shotgun were on steel targets so um, I was interested in seeing if I was pushing myself hard enough on my splits. Then also at the end I had planned on running my shotgun dry and using my match saver for the last steel target and fortunately for me my plan worked out. Um, downside was that as I measure my match saver here it was a bit slower uh, than it should have been. Uh, I got a little bit hung up on hitting the shell release button and um, it turned out costing me about a second here. But that's one of the great things about this app is that uh, it allows you to see where you mess up and where you can improve and what you need to practice. And then at the end of this stage you see I just put in a marker for the end of the stage and that gives me my total time and now I'm just going to go back and preview the whole stage in real time. 
by changing the speed back to 1x and just make sure that I got all of my shots and all of my splits entered correctly. One of the interesting things for me watching this stage back is that my plan completely changed like midway through the stage. Um, I had not planned to shoot the middle portion of this with the handgun and the transition to shotgun this way, but I missed so many shots on the steel uh, with my handgun that I changed course and decided to go and shoot the targets to the left with my handgun and then transition to my shotgun but I knew I would have to load a couple of extra shells to shoot those steel because I hadn't originally planned to shoot them. And so the interesting thing is that I had slugs set up in my first reload and I had to chuck those off my belt and then grab birdshot to be able to shoot all the steel targets. And so I'm happy that I was able to sort all that out under the clock, but it makes the middle of this stage look really messy. Now once you're done with all of your editing and adding your shots, if you just hit the back button at the top it'll take you back to the home screen. Again I'll select this video project and notice there's another button here called coaching. Uh, I haven't really used this button very much but it allows you to do things like draw uh, free text and put circles around targets and things. Uh, if you hit the question mark button again it'll explain to you what all these buttons do. Now I'm just going to go back and I'm going to click on output video because I want to save this to my phone. Uh, you can also email it to people or you can save it and text it to someone or you can save it to your desktop computer and do like I do and put it into iMovie and upload it to YouTube. You can preview uh, what your outputted video is going to look like by clicking on the play button and then when you've done that you just click the save button at the top, give it a few seconds and it'll save it to your phone or to your iPad camera roll. Now once you're done you get to see your finished product and here I am playing this video and as you notice at the top it shows you all your measurements as you're going through the stage. It plays you every split. It has a running total for the time uh, which is on the left hand side and then the actual time for the shot or the split or the reload is the last number. And just extremely helpful for things you do well, things you do bad, for you to realize, oh man, my reloads are a lot slower than I thought they were, or they're a lot faster than I thought they were, my splits need improvement, my movement needs improvement, really helps you focus on your practice so that you can practice more efficiently. And then another helpful thing that you really don't know about until you get to the very end is that it gives you this table at the end that shows you all your numbers and averages. Um, really and truly only a couple of these are really useful um, because some of these numbers can be very very inaccurate depending on how you measure them. So um, I found that my movement averages uh, and times are very helpful. Uh, my splits obviously are very uh, useful and helpful and also transitions. I think transitions are extremely helpful too. This is a place in a, in a stage where you lose a lot of time so anything you can do to improve your transitions is always helpful. Here's another stage that I shot the same day which I felt I did really well on. I was interested to see what my times were throughout the stage because I had a completely different stage plan than everybody else on this stage. Um, I chose to move throughout these different shooting boxes in a completely different pattern than everybody. It meant that I had to shoot the stage differently as well. Um, so uh, as far as total time, I think I was only off about three seconds from the person who won the stage for our squad. But I was just interested, in, number one, to see what my rifle splits were and what my movement was like. So that's it for the Shot Coach app, guys. I'm really, really impressed with this app right now. I'm going to be using it going forward. It's perfect for a rainy afternoon or something when you can't get outside to just uh, kick back, um, load up some stages onto your iPad or your phone, and go through and analyze yourself. Uh, then you can get it on the computer, send it to people, compare yourself to other people. Um, you know, one of these matches that I was shooting in a squad with Rob Romero, I videoed uh, him shooting some of these stages like me and I can put them side by side and just see where I can improve. Once again, thanks for watching. And I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. You can do that by clicking on the video on the upper left. As a subscriber, you'll be immediately notified every time I upload a video 
on a weekly basis. And these videos include guns and gear reviews, as well as content that's always related to 3Gun. And also, to watch more of my most popular videos, click on the video on the lower left. Once again, this is Mac. As always, be safe out there, and we'll see you next time.